What up, YouTube? We already post fight video of the David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade fight. Now, before I give y'all the summary of what happened in the fight, I'm going to tell y'all the results first. David Benavidez won this fight via seventh round TKO corner stoppage when the referee had told Demetrius Andrade's corner that he did not want to see another round like the sixth round. That's when Demetrius Andrade's corner had decided to not continue the bout anymore because after the fourth round, which is the round where the knockdown happened, it was all David Benavidez. And at the end of the sixth round, you could tell that Demetrius Andrade wasn't physically in the fight anymore. He was really out on his feet. And it looked like that he wasn't fully engaged with the fight anymore and that David Benavidez's shots was taking its toll on Demetrius Andrade. The lights was on, yet nobody was home. And Demetrius Andrade, he put up a good fight, I would say, till the third round. The first three rounds was very close, and the only round that I had scored in favor of Demetrius Andrade was the second round. Now, the first round could have been scored for either fighters. The momentum started to shift after the third round, and once David Benavidez figured out the rhythm of Demetrius Andrade and could start to telegraph Andrade's punches, and he got used to the power of Demetrius Andrade's shots. And once he figured out that he was able to walk through Andrade's shots, that's when Benavidez got comfortable and got control of the fight and was able to walk down Demetrius Andrade with shots of his own. And once he started to land that well, that's when Benavidez started to throw more combinations accurately and those heavy thudding shots that Benavidez was landing on Andrade was too much for Andrade to handle and it was clearly evident after the fourth round. Well it was really evident starting from the fourth round once Benavidez started to get comfortable and started to launch his offense at will and that's when Andrade couldn't stop Benavidez at his tracks. Andrade's speed was what was helping Andrade in the first three rounds. And that's whenever Benavidez would tend to close the gap and get in closer proximity at a range where Benavidez could start throwing his shots. And Andrade would counter that with speedy flurry combination of punches to have Benavidez be stopped at his tracks whenever Benavidez got close to where he could possibly land his shots. And once Benavidez figured out that that wasn't able to stop him, as I said, that's when he started to get in control of the fight. And he started to realize that he can get his game plan going the way he wanted to once he had figured out the rhythm and game plan of Demetrius Andrade. And then from there on, it was all Benavidez. And the knockdown happened at the end of the fourth round when Benavidez landed a straight right flush to the temple of Demetrius Andrade flooring him, and it was quite a late reaction from Demetrius Andrade. And then after that, Benavidez kept on walking down Andrade with combination of punches. The most effective punch of Benavidez in this fight were his uppercuts, as well as his straight right, and the body shots that he was landing during this fight was effective as well. And as boxing fans know, the straight right tends to be the key punch for orthodox fighters when fighting southpaw stance fighters. And Benavidez, all his punches 
with the heavy power that he that he carries in his hands seem to be effective and that straight right definitely paid dividends in this fight versus a boxer that is highly skilled like Demetrius Andrade, a southpaw boxer at that as well, and body shots from conventional stance fighters tend to be a key weapon for orthodox fighters when fighting southpaw fighters as well. And this was the first time in seven years that Benavidez had fought a southpaw fighter and obviously the last fighter that was a southpaw fighter that Benavidez fought seven years ago isn't on the same level as a Demetrius Andrade. And for him to put off a performance like the one he put on versus Demetrius Andrade last Saturday is definitely a good look for the currently undefeated former super middleweight champion. And now this has definitely got to put David Benavidez in the lead to challenge Canelo Alvarez for the undisputed super middleweight title for both fighters' next fights. Because I thought the winner of this fight should definitely get the next shot at the undisputed super middleweight title. And I'm sure that David Benavidez, not only for that big money fight versus the cash cow of the sport, but he would definitely like to get back his title, the WBC super middleweight title that he never lost in a fight. And him being the current interim WBC super middleweight champion means that he's next in line to challenge for one of the titles that Canelo Alvarez holds because Canelo Alvarez is the only super middleweight champion at the division right now. And Benavidez, with this back-to-back -back most impressive wins so far in his career, he defeated now two former world champions. And first, he defeated Caleb Plant, a former super middleweight champion in an impressive, good performance prior to defeating Demetrius Andrade last Saturday. And then he defeated a undefeated former two-divisional world champion, Demetrius Andrade, via TKO, unlike his last fight versus Caleb Plant, where that fight went the distance, even though David Benavidez had won that fight quite convincingly. This fight, David Benavidez didn't leave it up to the judges' hands, and David Benavidez and his power and his size and his offense and his skills is what led him to be victorious in this fight. And the results coming out of the works of his own hands. And that's the type of win that all fighters are like to win in. And David Benavidez, I think definitely should fight Canelo Alvarez next year for the undisputed super middleweight title and it would be a huge magnitude of a fight because obviously whenever Canelo Alvarez fights during the times that he fights at and that's usually during Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Independence Day and with David Benavidez also being a Mexican fighter that would call for a marketable bout during that time where Canelo fights usually. And right now, it would be the perfect time because Canelo Alvarez is in a contract with PBC. And that's the same promotion David, Be David Benavidez fights with. And that's why it would be an easy fight to make happen. And right now, from the talks that I heard through boxing sites, is that David Benavidez, along with Jamie Munguia and Jamal Charlo, and who else is it? And I heard um, 
Demetrius Andrade was in contention to possibly challenge for the undisputed super middleweight title. However, now he has to go back to the back of the line and work himself up to earn himself a future possible title shot at the undisputed super middleweight title after the defeat that he suffered last Saturday versus David Benavidez, especially the way he lost as well, he's going to need one or two bounce back fights from his performance versus Benavidez last Saturday. And I'm not saying a loss hurts the reputation or the momentum or the fighter's skills and his ability in any way, shape, or form because Demetrius Andrade is still a high-level, top-quality fighter. And if he fights, let's say, for example, a Anthony Durrell, a Caleb Plant, a... David Lemieux, a Jamal Charlo, any names of that caliber, let's say even a Jamie Mongia, John Ryder, guys like that, if he has a fight versus other top level contenders at super middleweight, and if he comes out victorious versus opponents like the guys that I had named, then that would put Demetrius Andrade right back in the spot to potentially challenge for the undisputed super middleweight title yet again sometime in the future. And Jamie Mungia, he's a current undefeated super middleweight contender as well and he's got a fight coming up next year January versus John Ryder who's fought Canelo Alvarez already and is a I would say a gatekeeper at super middleweight because he's not amongst the top 10 contenders at super middleweight now he can be Amongst the top 10 contenders ranked by one of the four title organizations. However, he's had his shot at the super middleweight undisputed title and he lost. And John Ryder has fought a veteran like Danny Jacobs. And as I have mentioned before, he also fought Saul Alvarez for the undisputed super middleweight title earlier this year. And by the way, Jamie Mungia, he's been collecting wins versus journeymen and lesser quality fighters than a name like John Ryder. So this fight coming up next year in January for Jamie Mungia to step in there versus John Ryder would be a fight where Jamie Mungia could prove himself and his legitimacy to contend for the undisputed super middleweight title. And that fight would be more of a difficult fight to make happen because Jamie Mungia is promoted by Golden Boy and he fights on the zone and Canelo Alvarez has stopped working with the zone after his trilogy bout versus Gennady Glovkin, and that's when he jumped ship to PBC, and we saw in Canelo Alvarez's last fight that was on PBC versus the majority unified super welterweight champion Jamel Charlo, and that was quite a easy victorious fight for Saul Alvarez, and hopefully. When Saul Alvarez fights next, he'll be defending his undisputed super middleweight title versus an actual super middleweight. And it would be more of a legitimate challenge 
not only stature-wise, however, on paper-wise as well, for Saul Alvarez to take on. Hopefully, it'll be David Benavidez that he fights next in defense of his undisputed super middleweight title. And as I said, Saul Alvarez hasn't worked with Golden Boy since he left Golden Boy. And him fighting on PBC and working with them now is going to make that Jamie Munguia fight a more difficult fight to make happen than a fight versus David Benavidez. And boxing-wise speaking, on paper, a fight versus David Benavidez is a much more intriguing bout than a fight versus Jamie Munguia because David Benavidez is a former champion at super middleweight and he's had the harder tests and he's fought better opponents at super middleweight and has earned a meaner reputation at super middleweight with the ways that he's been collecting victories versus his opponents as a late especially is what makes David Benavidez the number one candidate to contend and have a title shot for the undisputed super middleweight title next versus Saul Alvarez. And y'all let me know what y'all opinions are from this fight with David Benavidez and Demetrius Andrade. Comment y'all thoughts in the comments. Subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. And that does it for this post-fight video. Hit the links in the description to show y'all support for this channel. Anything will be appreciated. And I'm out of here, y'all. Be good. Peace.